Hello and welcome to the Sibsey West Midlands Region vlog and podcast. My name is Joss Brownlee and I'm joined today by Alan McWilliam. Alan, welcome. Great to have you here today. Thank you, Joss. Thank you for asking me. My pleasure. Um, Alan is a building services engineer with nearly 40 years of experience and has witnessed the transformation of the building services and construction industry. Alan McWilliam started his career as a mechanical services draft work, draftsman with IDC Limited in Stratford-upon-Avon, whom then sponsored him to study for an honours degree in building services engineering at Newcastle-upon-Tyne Polytechnic. Following graduation, Alan returned to IDC, where he started his professional career as a graduate mechanical services engineer, working on various pharmaceutical products in the UK and Belgium. Alan went on to work for various design companies, including Baker Hicks, PM Group, and is currently working with WSP in their industry division. Since 2016, Alan has undertaken the role of regional almoner for the Sibsey Benevolent Fund, the region covering as far as Stoke-on-Trent and Northampton, but mostly within the West Midlands region. Alan has also become a trustee of the Benevolent Fund. Outside of building services, Alan enjoys playing football, swimming and fishing, and has recently joined Birmingham Anglers Association. Last year, Alan raised a significant amount of money for the motor neurons disease charity by swinging from swimming from Gosport to Rye on the Isle of Wight. That's quite an introduction. Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's uh, quite, quite, quite a mouthful there, isn't it? I, I guess there's nothing more to tell uh, about uh, Alan McWilliam. Is, is there any more to tell us? About yeah, we, can, you, we can finish now. Yeah, done. <laughs> uh, so how did you get into the role of Almoner? Well, uh as simple as this really uh i was reading one of the uh Sibsey, uh newsletters and um it wasn't in the journal but it was in one of the newsletters and it and it just uh, said that there was an there was an, a need for a, a new almoner in the uh in in the west midlands region and as as it happened it was um uh an old friend who who'd been doing the role and for for, for personal reasons he he had to you know he had to sort of uh leave the role and um so yeah i i i'd always been interested in support i've i've been a member of sibsey since uh 1992 and you know it was it was it was, it was i've always been interested in supporting uh sibsey and um it was just a matter of it was just i don't know the almond role came along and it was something that i could do in 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 my own time and in my own way really and um and uh, it, it, Sibsi, by taking on this role, Sibsi have given me an opportunity to help people who have fallen on hard times and, and misfortune. And that's something I think, you know, we, we should all try and do in, in our lives. And um, but it's also it's also sort of extending the, the Sibsi offer beyond beyond uh, an engineering institution to one that, you know, uh, lo looks after its members in the longer term. You know, it's it's. Um, and that's a common misconception, I think, within the, the, the trade and within the industry, that it's only open to people that are contributing to it or have contributed it into, into the past. But that's not right, is it? it it's open to uh, mem members past and present and their spouses, potentially. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, uh, Joss. And, you, you... and um, I, I, I recognise that uh, you, you, there's, uh, it's a sensitive subject and, and confidentiality is obviously of the utmost importance. But uh, one of the ways that I believe the fund uh, has assisted um, past or, or present members and, and their spouses and, and partners is uh, conversions of uh, bathrooms when people's mobility starts to, to suffer or, or go downhill. Yes, that's one. That's one. Uh, way it's been used for in 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 the past um and uh, also uh, the, the cost of replacing boilers when boilers have failed or or or, or maybe the you know um the cost of supporting uh, uh heating bills um, yeah which is of course is uh, very much uh, uh, at the forefront of of uh, the news at the moment yeah um, uh, absolutely absolutely and um, but what I'm also, you know, keen on doing, and you know, this is is actually spreading the word and and you know, reaching out to uh, younger people who might be in need of assistance as well. Yeah. Younger people in our industry, of course, you know. And um, am I right in thinking that it's uh, available to 
members of any age, not just those of, of senior or so, uh, you know, as you say, um, those that are uh, younger, if they fall on hardship or, or need uh, some help and support, then that's what the fund is there for, for, for the members and, and past members. Uh, yes, uh, for, for any any grade of member. Um, there, there might be some rules on the the time. There might be a minimum time that you have to have been a member, but it's for any any grade. Okay. Uh, generally, what um, happens is I get, you, you know, someone would approach uh, Sibsey HQ at Ballam and th then they'll refer them on to, on to me if they're in the West Midlands. Or actually, there, there, there is no Almoner. I don't believe there's an Almoner in the East Midlands, so I've, but I tend to get passed on uh, East Midlands as, as well. Yeah, and it's just a, a confidential one-on-one -on -one chat to start with, I guess, to uh, absolutely yeah. see yeah. how we can assist or how the that, fund can assist. That, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and uh, right. yeah, uh, all things are, 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 are um, confidential. Um, what uh, interested you about it? Uh, is there anything else that interested you about it? Well, um, I, I, do you know what? I, I just love meet, meeting these people and sitting down and having a, a cup of tea and just talking about um, uh, the their, their memories of the industry or in the case of uh, a partner, a wife or a widow, a widower, um, you know, li listening to stories from when those people were working in, in the industry about projects, about buildings and about uh, the people as well, particularly about the people and, and the friends they made and the good and the laughs they had in the industry. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I can just sit and listen forever, uh, stories like that. Yeah, um, it's uh, really interesting hearing uh, the, the tales of you know how, how people wound up um, some of the juniors or um, uh, you know uh, a particularly interesting moment on site maybe or or uh, in a plant room or something along those lines. Yeah, well, yeah, and that ha that happened to me, so I can relate to those uh, relate to those stories. Yeah. Anything you can share with us? Um, well, I, one 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 day. Uh, because I, I, as you said in the introduction, I was a trainee draftsman and uh, I uh, produced a, an isometric of a boiler room, which I was really proud of. But uh, when it got onto site, uh, they ripped it apart and um, they uh, taped it to the wall of the boiler room. And um, my boss went down there on a on a site visit, on a quality inspection, and uh, yeah, it really annoyed him when he saw this. Uh, it didn't he wasn't annoyed with the uh, fitter on site he was annoyed with me so he came back to the office and said right next time I go to site I'm taking you down there and um, yeah he he took me down to the uh, uh, down into the boiler room on the site and uh, introduced me to the to the uh, fitter and uh, let and, and let the fitter tell me what what was wrong with my drawing which was quite as you can imagine was quite a learning experience yeah and yeah. and that story stuck in, in in the company for a long time actually. And when I left, they gave me a present. It was, it was uh, they had a an artist in the company, and he sort of reproduced my 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 uh, boiler room isometric in a rather comical way with with these uh, graffiti that had been written all over it. Uh, you know about me and uh, my ability to put it politely in uh, draftsmanship. Strain of valves put in upside down and yeah, uh... it, it, all these things that as a youngster you didn't really appreciate. You know. Yeah, well, you know, uh, there's a, a fundamental difference between uh, the the lines and the the uh, circles and arcs on a on a drawing, whether CAD or uh, yes, by hand. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and but it, it, but it was all done in it was all done, uh, you know, to the benefit of everyone. There's no hard feeling. I, I didn't take I didn't take any uh, you know hard feeling from it. It was just a learning experience for me. It was all a bit of a, a laugh at the end of the day, and uh, well, I, yeah. thank, I thank I thank my boss for doing it. Yeah, learning from the fitter in, you yeah. know, you might yep. want to do it this way for future because, yeah. you know, this thread works this way and that valve works this way yeah. and, yeah, access to it. and Yeah, and or, reasons. you know, or, you know how, how do you expect us to, you know, get that component, that heavy component up to that level? You know, how, how do you tell me how you want us to do that? Because it's really yeah. difficult. Yeah, and bracketry and supports. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you get involved with sustainability and renewables? I do because you know it's very difficult to avoid it. I th I think at, at, at the moment, um, you know, I I guess many of the companies we work with have their their net zero requirements and and aspirations. Um, 
so that's one that's one uh leader into the whole into the whole subject of sustainability and renewables um but of course there's also legislation at the moment which is you know taking us along the road of carbon reduction energy reduction and um well you you, you know if if a, if a client i'm working with is is um doesn't have any strong feelings about the subject and the legislation isn't relevant then personally i'll still try and push that because you know that's what we've got to do we've got to reduce carbon emissions um we've also got to reduce energy consumption no more so than than you know think what's happening now and and what's going to happen to the running costs in in the buildings that we're involved with in building services design because uh you know this this um problem we have with energy prices and gas prices it, you know it might not go it might not go away yeah yeah uh, for a long um, time and any renewable technologies of, of particular interest to you? Um, well, I've um, yes, so solar is an interest. I mean, I've not found an application within a project for um, wind turbines, but yeah, I've specified uh, solar panels, solar thermal, and photovoltaics, and and um, ground source uh, heat pumps as as well. Yeah. Um, where do you see the industry going regarding energy efficiency? That's a good question. That's quite a difficult question because I think it's, so much work has been done on, uh, you know, boiler efficiency, chiller efficiency, fan and pump efficiency, and um, you know, it's 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 you know we now we now have to consider the seasonal efficiencies and. And it's it's difficult to you can't keep improving. There are limits. So I think we all have to accept there are limits of what the boiler manufacturers can do and what the chiller manufacturers can do. And it might be that they're getting uh, close to those limits now. So I think maybe maybe where and I, I don't know for sure, but where it might go next might be uh, more control, more uh, efforts and legislation surrounding system efficiency and how um you know how the dynamics of load within a building or a process interact with the systems controls and that of the controls of the central plant um maybe uh systems in buildings will be benchmarked and you know we'll we'll have to demonstrate uh, every year that the system operating costs are achieving a certain predetermined benchmark yeah and operating and functioning efficiently because uh you know that that energy is going to be consumed to to perform a task or as you say a process um but if it's if it's wasteful then uh, that's as bad as um con consuming more than uh, uh, is intended but um yeah because you 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 you, you know you just take the example of a, uh, a gas fired condensing boiler tr tremendously good efficiencies but if it's if the system design isn't uh, correct then uh, or the installation or the, even even the, the even the thermal insulation you know if, if that's not all correct then you, you know you could you may not be operating it may be costing more to run in and using more gas more carbon emissions than is necessary yeah yeah and it's not just about the um uh, fuel that it's using but uh, doing it in in an efficient way and looking at the emissions from it as well because yeah uh, that all needs to be considered in the overall cost to the operation yeah. of, the, of the unit um, yeah. How would you summarise the evolution of building services design industry? Um, it's more challenging, but but not in a not in a negative way. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying, you know, in trying to answer this, I think back to when I came in into the industry 40 years ago. So, that, you know, obviously passage of time and and when I came into the industry 40 years ago, I, I wasn't um, at such a senior level as I am now. But I guess, you know, I, you know, there's no better person to ask about how the industry has changed than someone who came into it 40 years ago. So so I, I think there's more legislation, regulations and guidance now. Um, and digital yeah well well um yeah definitely um although it, well definitely there's been a digitization both at the design level and 
and the component level as well. Um, but obviously there's more emphasis on carbon uh, emissions now, because when I came into the industry, for, into the industry 40 years ago, uh, the, Global warming hadn't been heard of, had it? In the, in the early 1980s, global warming was not an issue. I don't think many people uh, realised what was going to happen. Um, so obviously that that's different now. Um, and uh, I think something else that's uh, changed is, is uh, and as, as I say, these are all positive things, is health and safety, because health and safety, and like I just said to you when we were laughing about the uh, boiler fitter saying, you know, come on, Alan, how do you want me to get that component up there? Well, now we have to think about far more about uh, the installation and the maintenance. So, and and the ability to install and maintain systems safely and and decommission them and demolish them safely, uh, quite rightly dictate what we do in the design office. Well, yeah. it didn't used to be like that so much, I don't think. But, yeah. but we'll see. We've got CDM to thank for that. Yeah. Yeah, all significant changes. Yeah, um, but all, but 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 also, sorry, but but also, I think um, the manufacturers, the the supply industry, the manufacturing industry, the HVAC components, their pursuit of continued improvement. Um, you, you know, the, the the products have evolved, and the products are smart now, and uh, there's so much more data and information for the designer to use. And of course, the internet has has influenced the uh, the industry no end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing what you have. Just a couple of last questions, if I may. Uh, yep. What do you like to do in your spare time? OK, um, I've always liked fishing and I still uh, fish now. I, I, as I think you said earlier in the introduction, I uh, just recently joined Birmingham Angler Association uh, and I like to take myself off uh, in the fishing season, uh, fly fishing for trout on local streams. Which is fantastic that you find uh, uh, trout in, in in the stream, you know, despite what you hear about pollution. Um, I'm a keen swimmer. Um, I've had to take up swimming because my uh, ankles no longer allow me to play football because I have always played football as well, but I've had to stop that. Um, yeah, and, and just the simple things in life, going out walking with my wife and uh, picking blackberries and things like that, really. Fresh from the bush. Yes, fresh in the bush, yeah, and slows, yeah. I, I like to uh, every autumn pick the slows and make my own slow gin, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Excellent. And uh, have you made any lifelong friends in building services? Uh, yes, I have. I have. I'm pleased to say. Um, I mean, I, I think that's quite normal. For, I think we all we all have made friends. In, all of us in building services have made friends from building services. Um, you know, apart from you make friends from school, but it's in the passage of time, you know, they tend to drop off and and um, you make friends from areas like team sport, don't you? And things like that. But but, yeah, I've made lots of friends uh, from the building services industry and both within work and education. And um, one of the best friends I have now, you know, I met him on the first day that I started at Garrett's Green, uh, the, the technical college in Birmingham back in 1982. Uh, that's, that's so nice, I think, to be able to, you know, still spend time with those people. Any, any fellow fishermen? Uh, yes, yes, there, yeah, there, there are, yeah. Uh, well, there's, there's, there's uh, two actually, two, yeah. One who I see on a local river, which is lovely to bump into him on the riverbank, and um, one who lives down in Southampton, so I don't see him so much. So, yeah. Yeah. anyone you'd like to uh, recognise uh, that's helped you along your journey? Uh, yes, um, there, there. There, you know, wherever you are, wherever you're working, I think people try and help you, don't they? No matter what the stage you are. But but when I um, first started out in in the industry, um, well, sadly, he's no longer with us, but a man called uh, David Webley, he was a tremendous uh, guidance and, and influence on me in every aspect. Good. And um, where can people discover more about you? Well, I suppose uh, social media uh, from a from a work perspective linkedin or um from a personal perspective of uh, facebook um so anyone can um anyone's welcome to reach out to me as we say these days and uh, uh request um a uh, friend request on linkedin or uh facebook and of course regarding the the sibsi almana role then uh you know you can you can contact me via the um by that the, the Sibsi website or through 
uh, Ballon, the HQ in Ballon. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining and sharing with us what you have today. Uh, if anybody watching or listening would like to share your thoughts with us, please don't hesitate to do so. Also, if you'd like to feature in a future episode or know of or can think of somebody that you'd like to find out or is an inspiration to you, please get in touch. Please like, comment and share. And we look forward to the next episode of Sibsey West Midlands Region Vlog and Podcast. Thank you, Alan. Yeah, thank you very much, Joss. I hope the uh, listeners uh, find it interesting.